Hello everybody, I'm glad you're here today. I want to get right to it and Chloe is acting really weird so I don't know if she's going to want to be in the video or make an appearance in the background but I, I want to share a dream with you today that my daughter had this week. It is very much an apocalyptic dream which is very uh, consistent with what she dreams and the kinds of dreams that we pay attention to when she dreams them. Um, it's cold today. I'm in front of the fire. I'm glad you're here with me, joining me. I hope that you are warm and safe wherever you are. And I pray God's blessing upon you. I have been in prayer about this dream I'm about to bring you. Um, I don't know how literal it is. I don't know if it's more spiritually. Uh, the meaning is more spiritual, more spiritual, but I do think it is a warning dream. And I think it's... Um, prophetic. Um, I think that uh, when you hear it, uh, I'm so interested in what you think and how what you think the Lord is telling you. And it's not just your opinions about what it means. Um, be in prayer. The Spirit will lead you and He leads me in um, what these dreams mean. Um, let me do a background on my daughter right quick. She's 28. Uh, she's an RN. She moved away and then moved back in with us uh, the Christmas before the pandemic started. I mean, God just brought her home before all that mess started. Uh, so anyway, um, she's a believer. She's a solid believer. Thank Jesus. And so I'll just tell you what she what she wrote down in my journal uh, from November 7th. 2022 uh this is what she dreamt last night i dreamt that i was at church out in the front and i looked up to see a giant missile it was black white and red that had bbc on it i said that we were being nuked I went back inside and there were North Korean soldiers coming and shooting people. There wasn't anywhere to hide. So I got my comforter, like she got her uh, big, heavy, fluffy down comfor comforter that's on her bed. And the four of us, which was her brother and, and myself and, and Mike, they all hid. We all hid under the comforter, under a table. And then... We knew they wouldn't find us because God clouded their vision so they couldn't see us. After that, we were living in a world with limited electricity and limited internet. I had a small amount of battery left on my phone and I knew once it died, I wouldn't have any battery left. I knew the nuke had hit Florida. Uh, or off just off the coast of Florida. Somehow she just knew that. We made little areas for ourselves to stay in. Uh, we had to make an outdoor kitchen. We couldn't stay in our house. And the six of us, that would include my parents, our, our family unit of four, and then my mom and dad, uh, Nan and G Daddy, uh, the six of us made a place in the church building in a hidden room. Now, my sister and her family came up. They're from Austin. Her name is Julie and Kevin and Renee and Jason are their children. And they were, uh, they had come up and lived in the back lot behind our house. And then, um, my husband's brother, Neil, who lives in Colorado, came and stayed with us. Now, Renee, uh, my niece, got burned uh, by an electric fence. She had coated her hands with oil and then touched the hot wire fence, uh, the electric fence, and that had burnt her hands. So my daughter, Taylor, rushed over to see if she was okay or needed to perform CPR. But Renee was okay and was not hurt. 
there was a rush of people to get ice, bags of ice, like sonic ice. Um, uh, people were taking the ice and, that, and it was being used to keep their dead animals on. Uh, so then Taylor decided to send a message to John Christ, who is a Christian comedian that we don't even know, um, and tell him about our compound. Pe we called it the compound, is what she said. People we knew were coming to the compound, working together to create a group. And that was the end of the dream. So here are, our, I, I, I'm open to your interpretations, please. I don't, I don't know exactly what all of this means. If it's literal, then, <laughs> then we're, we're going to be in big trouble <laughs> if it's literal. Here are some of the things that stood out to me. First of all, the missile was, I didn't, tell me, black, white, and red, what is that? Is that a flag? Is that someone's flag? Um, is it, does it represent countries? Uh, I don't know. The BBC, I think, represents the British Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, that's their big network, a television network, the BBC. Um, so I think it might, this has to do with the UK. Does the missile come from the UK? Does the, does the attack on the UK first? Um, I don't know. I know Russia ain't happy with the UK right now. So that's an observation about this dream. Now, one of the things I love about this dream is the idea that she grabbed her down comforter from her bed and we all got under it. And in scripture, the Holy Spirit, he is described as a comforter. One of the things uh, the Holy Spirit does for us, one of the things he does for us is to comfort us. So I don't think it's accidental that she grabbed her comforter and got under it. I love that. That's the Holy Spirit protecting us. And that God clouded their vision so they couldn't see us. I think that's happening now in a way and it may happen in a more miraculous way in the future so then you know not living uh, living in a world with limited electricity and limited internet that sounds like EMP to me like an EMP attack possibly I'm not an expert in that arena but it, could that be what that means um, my husband is a is a big um, computer guru. That's his job. That's what he does. And it would be very, very difficult to knock out the entire internet. So this makes sense that we would have limited internet. That makes sense in some kind of an attack like this on our own homeland. Now then, I don't understand Florida, why it would, why she was in the middle of in the Texas Panhandles where we live, to be able to no to see a nu nuke that hit Florida. I find that interesting. I don't completely understand that. Maybe you do. Um, I do think it's interesting that our family members um, like journeyed up here to where we were. We lived off, um, you know, what we have gathered so far. And People came and and um, and lived there, lived here with us. Now, my niece, who burned her hands because she touched a hot wire fence and she had oil on her hands. Um, my niece lives in New York State, not far from New York City. Um, I wonder if there is a, a parallel here with that. Um, for those of you who don't know what a hot wire fence is, um, I'll just explain that briefly. In uh, And I'm sure it's used in lots of different ways. Around here, 
a hot wire fence is, um, I mean, it looks like just a, a piece of wire that goes across. It keeps the cows in, so you don't, you can just string this wire between two fence posts um, instead of putting so many fence posts to, to keep the cows in. If a cow touches that wire, it'll get electrocuted. Just a little shock. It doesn't hurt them. Um, and then they'll know not to try to get out of the pasture. They don't want, they won't want to touch that wire again. Now, I have touched a hot wire fence uh, on accident. Uh, I didn't think it was hot. <laughs> and this happened more than once. Um, it doesn't take, I mean, it'll zap you. Will it knock you down and like ugh, electrocute you? No, not not in any way, shape, or form. But it it will jolt you, and you'll probably want to say a bad word. If you don't say a bad word, you're a better man than I. So uh, anyway, or woman than I. So um, yeah, that's a hot wire fence. You would not even to oil your hands and touch it would be like very very foolish. Um. So I'm not sure why she did that other than it might represent people in New York who are being foolish with what they're doing. Now then, the idea that people were gathering ice to put their animals on it, I think that means that your freezers weren't working. And so, um, come here, Chloe. So that uh, people were um, trying to preserve their food in any way, shape, or form they could. That's what I think. Um, I don't understand that necessarily, why that was in this dream. But uh, other than to represent the desperation of people during this time. I don't know, y'all. I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm not really even afraid of what's going to happen. Except um, spiritually, uh, physically... Literally, I mean, I don't know what this dream brings us. For sure, spiritually, we're in a, in a war like that with the enemy. That's for sure. Believers who believe in Jesus, that he is the Son of God, and that he came to earth and died for us, and that um, he has uh, risen from the dead and ascended into heaven, and he's coming back. He's coming back to get the believers, y'all. For which I am one, and I hope you are too. And when he gets us, we're going to be in heaven with him forever and ever. And we won't be crying, and we won't have pain, and we'll be with him. So that day is coming. How, what happens between now and then, I'm not sure. Except what seems like is happening now is that, you know, Jesus described it like birth pains, labor pains. Um... With the women out there who have had children, I have had children, um, physically, um, you know, those, those pains start and they're pretty far apart. Uh, for a while, you're not even sure you're in labor. You're like, was that a labor pain? The first time you're in labor, you're like, I don't know what that feels like. I think that is where our, our world has been, where we're like, are we really even nearing the coming of Christ, the end of, of the world and Christ's return, you're not even sure. But then as time goes by, as time goes by, we, we get closer and closer to the, the return of Christ. Those pains are going to get closer and closer together and more and more intense. And I think that's where we're at now. These things that we're seeing, the plagues, the earthquake, the weather changes, um, the violence, those things are the intensity of birth pains. They are intensifying and becoming more and more frequent. And I think we're hurtling towards an apocalyptic type world, possibly, for sure spiritual world. So we need to put on the armor of God, Ephesians 6.10. We need to know who the enemy is, which is the unseen world. Once again, Ephesians 6, 10, 10 and following. And we need to um, be very grounded in our faith. This is not playtime. And it's not time to be afraid. 
But it is a time to be super, super solid in Jesus and in your faith. In the end, that's what's going to save you. Because that's really all there is. That's all there is. Everything else here is garage sale stuff. That's all I have today. I'm planning some things for the channel, which I think you'll like. I have a couple of dreams from my dad that are so compelling. I, y'all, I, I mean, I am digging deep on this one. Uh, from, from Zechariah. He actually had a dream that mentions Zechariah 3, 6 through 9. So I'm going to bring that to you. But right now, I'm done with this. Please take this dream and pray about it. I'm going to go let my dog out because she's telling me she wants to go chase the chickens. So anyway, I'm so glad you joined me. I hope this helped you. Stay close to Christ. Be ready. He's coming back. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.